Can you guys hear me? It's good? Okay. All right, um, today I'm going to be talking about building an easy build container library in Scilabs Cloud. So um, this was kind of a talk done in just about a week. It's pretty uh, short notice, but I think it'll be pretty interesting. I want to get you guys thinking at the end of the talk uh, what we can what we can do to build containers uh, and what would be next steps. So just a little bit of background. Um, easy build singularity support was first introduced in uh, version 3.6.0. And then uh, following that, there was support for Docker container. The easy build container is still an experimental feature. Um, and you know this requires a lot of community testing and feedback and hoping that after this talk, I want you guys to think about what we can do going forward. And um, I'm gonna cover a couple of the things in this talk. One of the things is my experience uh, using Scilabs Cloud and actually building containers. Um, right? And then I'm gonna cover some of the bugs uh, that, are found, that, that I've uncovered in the framework that we need to fix. Some of them um, need to be fixed in the subsequent release. <coughs> Then I'll talk about the easy build container library with different bootstrap agents. Um, and then talk about the implementation of the singularity template in the <coughs> framework and ways on how we can improve it. And then actually talk about the container library that, that I have in, Scil in Scilabs. Hopefully by the end, I can show you a little bit of a demo of how you can build and then we'll wrap up. So the first thing, I want to point out these issues. The reason why I'm doing it is because if you go ahead and try to actually do it, you're going to run into some issues. First one is uh, this issue 3135, which was to upgrade pip and install pip, uh, wheels package in, uh, the, in the singularity recipe file. And this issue has been resolved in version 411, which is the latest version. So if you need to, uh, if you have easy build, just upgrade it, and that should fix it. Now there are some other issues that were uh, <coughs> uncovered during the testing, which was one, you can't switch the easy build user inside the container. It's 3171. So um, I've been talking with the Scilabs folks, what the issue is, and I think Kenneth was in there too. We found a solution, so there, there is a way to fix it, but it's not done in the framework. Uh, there are some couple of dependencies issues that I've found in using different bootstrap agent, particularly Docker and library. Uh, library is the, um, um, the uh, bootstrap agent when you push containers to Scilabs, right? Um, initially, there was a 30 minute timeout. They pushed it up to 60 minute uh, because I, I couldn't build GCC on Scilabs, but there's still limitations, so you can't build really large containers, you know, that take a lot of time. Uh, and in some odd cases, I ran into issues like, whoops, um, um, Scilabs not streaming logs, so you can see this, I have a failed uh, build, but I don't see anything. So it's really hard to troubleshoot. And on the left you can, it's probably a little bit hard to see, but that, that arrow right there shows a build timeout error when I was actually trying to build GCC. So these are just a couple of issues I just want to uh, point out. Now this is kind of what I thought about how you can actually generate uh, I'm kind of like a workflow for easy build singularity containers. So the first thing is you need to generate the recipe. So this is already in the framework. You take EB, some uh, easy config like bin utils. Dash C is for enabling container mode. Experimental is required <coughs> as of now for because of the experimental feature. And then container config tells you, okay, well, I want to specify uh, you know, particular bootstrap. In this case, yum, and then uh, OS version. Next. If you want to build uh, on Scilabs, you need to do singularity remote login, which uh, will ask you for an access token, which you have to get from Scilabs. And then after that, then you can actually do the remote build. So singularity build, remote, and then the SIF file, and then the actual recipe. Now this recipe is uh, auto-generated by easy build in this format, singularity.easyconfig name with the .eb taken out. And then step four and five, all of this is kind of optional. <coughs> this is basically if you want to push signed containers, that's the default in Scilabs. So what you have to do is singularity key, new pair, generate a key, 
Um, and then you can do a key list to list your key. And if during step 4A, if you select no for would you like to push the key to key store, which is the Scilabs, um, you know, you could do singularity key push. But if you say yes, then you don't have to do 4C. After that, you do sign and, uh, on the container and verify. And then you can then push. In this case, I'm pushing bin, um, bin utils and to this library. So that's basically the, the format of how to get an easy build container built and then push to Scilabs. Okay, so now talking about different bootstrap agents. Uh, Singularity has different <coughs> agents. That's basically what like a base image used to build a container. Um, the ones I'm gonna talk about are specific to easy build. I've only talked about Yum library and Docker because those are the important ones. I think easy build also supports local <coughs> image and shub. But the one that works or supposedly had worked before I even did testing like a couple, uh, a couple months ago was this Yum. The one that you do bootstrap Yum and OS version seven, right? CentOS seven in this case. I'm gonna talk about, okay, so if you do the library, you can, you can do it, bootstrap equals library and then the actual um, image. So there is a CentOS image in Scilabs that you can get and then similarly there's one in Docker Hub in this case. I'm gonna talk about some of the issues that, we, that I ran into using different bootstrap agents, but the idea is that if you're familiar with singularity, what's happening is actually changing this bootstrap um, on the recipe file when you actually pass this into easy build, okay? So here, here is the command building M4 with, in this case, library uh, CentOS 7. So this is testing with the Scilabs <coughs> image. So what I ran into, maybe a little bit hard to see, but the issue is that um, it can't find pip in that, um, in that CentOS image. The issue is trivial, but it's actually not practical from the framework to actually fix because if you let users pick any base image, you don't know what is in the base image. And EasyBuild does not have a way of, of satisfying all the uh, requirements, requirements meaning uh, installing yum, yum packages, whatever, in the uh, recipe file. So just, just doing a check right here, you know, pip is not installed um, in that image. Right? I'm just doing a pip version on that library. So now I just tried Docker because it didn't work with library. So I'm trying to build Anaconda. In this case, bootstrap equals Docker and then CentOS 7. And then after that, you know, when you get the uh, recipe, which is right there, you can then do a uh, remote build. Sorry, it just keeps going now. Um, I ran into the same issue where I can't install pip. So I wanted to try this a little bit more and see how I can fix this. So I tried to explore this post command option, which I was gonna to try to install a pip inside the recipe just to see how things work. Well, it turns out that it install, it writes this command <coughs> after the pip. So it doesn't work. So what I did is then, you know, well, I can move it over after I generate it. Uh, but there's another issue. Um, I'll, I'll cover this later, but when you set these <coughs> commands, it doesn't actually create the easy build user inside the recipe and that's covered in this ticket. I'll cover that later. But So then what I did is then I try to copy this stuff from the easy, easy build framework, the template for creating the user and then creating this directory path where easy build needs to write um, manually and then try to build. And then what happens is, over here, you know, I'm trying to build. I run into a which problem. I didn't. I, there wasn't installed because that image didn't have it. So you get the point of these issues that are happening because I'm using different images. And the other issue is that Easy Build is running in it as root, which is related to the. It can't switch to Easy Build user inside the container. And there is a way to fix it, but that's what I ran into. So, sorry. So some of the things that. Um, that I've learned is using different bootstrap actually breaks container builds because different base images have different base, uh, package dependencies. 
So uh, you can't even get easy build working inside. What works, well, it still doesn't work to the full extent, but it's the CentOS Yum bootstrap. So a proposal I have, these are just a couple that I mentioned, um, is one if we standardize on one bootstrap, that means remove all bootstrap support from the easy build framework at the moment. I think it supports five or six different bootstrap. So container config has bootstrap equals you know, other stuff. Build a base image that installs all easy build dependency with the exception of easy build, right? Pip install easy build, right? Right now the recipe generates all of this stuff for you, uh, but I'm saying build a base image. And then we remove, there's another feature that says that users can specify their own template file. So dash dash container, <coughs> template, recipe. Um, well, it seems like it may be easier to let easy build just generate and then afterwards user can just edit the recipe file. Um, just because it's just command line just doesn't really work with uh, with this. So now I'm going to cover the recipe file. That's part of the framework. Starts from right there. It's uh, it's in the framework. There's a variable called singularity underscore template, and there's this bootstrap, which is the in the red. What it what it does is you know it whatever you said in bootstrap equals well that's what this is yum. Then you have bootstrap config. If you set OS version seven, it pre-populates the mirror URL. In this case, it's mirror CentOS. And then, you know, this include equals yum. In the post section, this is the section where it installs the OS dependency. These are kind of the system packages, which is right here. A lot of it are just generic packages. There's one line here that's about open, open MPI dependencies that are also installed. Um, we'll cover that also, what I did with this. And then the uh, install EB is where you install the easy build uh, through PIP. Now this screenshot was taken before 4.1.1, so there's still an issue, right? Um, but you, you'll face this where it doesn't install PIP in here, you need to do that. Um, and then this is where you generate the easy build um, um, uh, a user account and then the directory, and that's through post command. This snippet right here is a code, starts on line 326. Well, I'm sure you can't read it, but what, what, it's, what it's saying is that if the post command is not defined in the template, it will actually write this content into the <coughs> template. So it's a, it's, a, it's a weird thing, but I'll show you what I've done to fix all of this. Um, Shazam, a question. Can you go back? Yeah. I don't understand the issue why pip is missing if there's a yum install Python pip there. So in the, yeah, in the I, post I, I part, <coughs> how come pip is not there if the, if the package is installed? Oh no, I totally agree. That, that was in the other, um, um, sorry, that was in the Docker and uh, ah, okay. CentOS. And the, re the issue is because they could be using different uh, uh, yum repos, so Python pip is not found. Um, it could be, May that could be, be one of it. Yeah. 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 Um, just moving on to the template. So on the right, there's just more stuff. So this is where you switch to the easy build user, and this is where you actually do the easy, easy build uh, commands through the easy build user in the container. Most of it is just setting up the easy build configuration and then uh, running EB robot on the easy config and then update the unlock cache. There is, a, there is an issue with running this command, su to easy build in that ticket, 3171, and it's gonna install easy build <coughs> inside slash app and then uh, all the other stuff in slash scratch, which is right here. Uh, and, you know, an issue that, you, just to highlight, yeah, we, 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 we run into this issue where, you know, you have this root privilege, um, which there is a fix to this also. So, and then just moving on, um, you know, root will clean up the scratch, and then this is where the environment section is set up. Uh, this is kind of this uh, little magic that kind of allows us to, what it's doing is it's, uh, it's loading the modules inside the container and purging everything outside the container, right? Module force purge 
remove everything, including sticky modules, unused, and then use the module inside the tree, inside the container. So what I thought is we can do something better with this approach. What I did is I extrapolate um, the base image um, from the easy build, and I actually uh, took all the content and put it into a, another file. So I have this easy build container here. Um, this might be a little hard to see, but I'll show you what it looks like. It's very similar to, <coughs> all right, can you guys see this? Yeah. All right, so the same thing. So I'm bootstrapping from yum, same exact thing. Post, everything is the same. The only exception is the OpenMPI dependencies. I don't want to have that installed as part of the base. I only want that installed when you're building the OpenMPI container. That makes sense. Then I create the easy build user, and then I actually do uh, do the same thing as what I do with easy build configuration, but I put it under the um, uh, the, the startup files, bash rc and bash profiles, so that when you switch to this user, you should have this. Um, I'm just being extra paranoid, but I want to make sure that both interactive and login works. Um, so it's the same exact stuff. I prefix a scratch. Um, install pathos apps and etc. And then you know just uh, cre pre-creating the directories and uh, you know that's basically the same and then the LMOT stuff. Okay? And, and, and then we don't do anything else with the other stuff. So th what that looks like in terms of the sections is you know this is the easy build stuff um, package dependency obviously and then the LMOT. Um, and I've named this container as 1.0. This is what I consider a base image, right? Once we have this image, the framework doesn't really need to have this implemented as part of the uh, as part of this code. It could just bootstrap from this. Um, and then we can bootstrap from this image. Let me just switch over again to the other. Um, so I'm going to show you how you can actually build this. Uh, obviously, I wrote some of this. What I did is I just generated the easy uh, the, the template from easy build and then I had to modify some stuff manually. One thing I had to do manually was bootstrap from the image that I created, then do the pip install of pip and easy build and all that stuff. Note that it's a lot cleaner. There's not any other stuff that's in there. And then this is the part that's exactly the same. Switching to the easy build user, the fixes, the double angle, bra angle brackets, EOF and then write the uh, write the content and then close it. And then everything else is exactly the same as before. Qu question here, can you go back up? Yeah. So the, the SU easy build and then the commands running as the easy build user, <laughs> that, that's a breaking change that Scilabs made, right? Before we could just switch yeah. to the easy build user, yeah. run the commands, exit, and then we were back as root. Exactly, yeah. What, and th this was discussed on the... On the yeah. Singularity Slack, and I don't see it as a bug they introduced, but a fix they did. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. we were just assuming this was okay while it was actually not. It, it, it was working. It was working for, since we released this in April of 2018, which is when 3.6.0 was released, and this was working. I've built many containers. Yeah. It doesn't work anymore. And Scilabs <laughs> doesn't think this is an issue. Or, or, they, they've, they've never thought about having to actually uh, having switch to user accounts thing. in the post section because everything is supposed to be run as root. Yeah. And, and are, are we doing. just the weird guys using a separate account rather than root? Well, it's also because easy build requires... Refuses. Well, yeah, yeah. You so can that's why you have to switch. You can configure it to allow you running yeah. as root, but even in a container. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, so, it's not a good idea. Yeah, so that, that was kind of, I mean, it's a fix. I, I honestly am puzzled, so I don't really know what, what to do, but just do the fix. Um, yeah, so one of the things that may be a little confusing about the module stuff, you know, what we're trying to do is just showcasing. So I have modules listed outside the container, but then if you list modules <coughs> inside the container, well, you know, we see M4 here, but you don't see the stuff out, uh, outside the host. So we're trying to fix this by this environment section, which, um, you know, it, it works to some extent, but we still need to do more testing. Uh, another issue um, that that uh, 
you'll find if you're trying to build, like for instance, uh, Java, which tries to download uh, tarballs, you're gonna run into like, you know, this JDK is not available. Well, to fix this, just place the, uh, the tarball in the host, temp easy build source, and then it will work because we have it by mounted. It's this thing right here. It's binding temp easy build source to scratch source. That way it passes it to the container and then easy build will find it and then it will work. So if you do that, then it works. Then you know you, just a couple other points, you know, you know, we're getting the Java easy config from the upstream repo, cleaning up at the end, and then generating the SIF file. Other couple things, if you do singularity shell, you can see that you have a module environment inside and bin utils is loaded. Um, this may be a little hard to see, but the, what I'm doing is singularity run on bin utils. And you know, if you echo a module path, you will see the modules on the host, not on the inside the container, even though module path is set. Um, because singularity does pass in all the environment variables. So this may be a little confusing, which I still have to work through if we've got this thing done correctly. But um, it's still uh, just something to point out. Wait, singularity passes the whole environment mm -hmm. when you yeah. shell into the container. Yeah. Did, didn't that used to be different? It Did, used to be. You, ha you used to have to tell it like these pass them into the container and everything else. Well, there's one that's a there's clean environment that's not supposed to pass in all this stuff, but I've tried that and that still doesn't pass in all, all this it stuff. It still passes stuff. Yeah, it still passes in. Now what I've tried, uh, just if you're curious, I've done ENV in that and then grab for easy build and, or not easy build, but module path and it does sh show you the actual one inside the container. It's weird, but it, 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 it's something that I'm still wrapping around why it works that way. So the next thing I want to talk about is how you can do easy build tool chain stacking. So we just talked about easy build 1.0, which is the base image I created. It's on Scilabs. And then you can actually use it to build, <coughs> um, basically to build like a FOSS tool chain. That's kind of the goal I want, to have multiple FOSS tool chain. In order to build it, we need to have Gompi, then GCC, then GCC core, and then bin utils. And then we have to go in the right direction. So we have to build bin utils, push it to Scilabs, then GCC core, push it to Scilabs, push GCC. You get the point. And then you can do other tool chains. Once you have all of these tool chains in, in, in Scilabs, then users can just bootstrap from any of the images and build other containers. Make sense? It, does it make a lot of sense to have a, like the first bin utils container? Why would you have that in Scilabs? Why not? Yeah. Why not? I mean, having one for GCC core makes sense. I thought about that too. Yeah, but not for bin utils, and probably also not for the GCC layer, because these are mm -hmm. nothing gets installed with GCC. If yeah. you already have GCC core and bin utils, it's just an yeah, I know an empty bundle. Yeah, so I, you I thought, probably got yeah. to. Yeah, I thought about that too, and I think we could also remove. And I kind of agree. I'm just not sure which <laughs> approach is. Um, if you know, just to shorten the, the idea is to shorten the time. Because in the easy build, you're actually doing EB robot. So if you do if you do bootstrap, you will save the time. If you're doing FOSS and you don't, and you bootstrap from this, you actually have to build all of this in, again. So that's the whole point. So this is kind of what I have. I don't know why the font's there, but you can see these are the containers M4. I built them, Binutils, Anaconda, Java, and then the base image. Um, I have this pushed. <coughs> to a repository, which I have to figure out. Um, all the recipe files are in here. This is the base image, and then I have everything under apps. And there is an upstream repo that's kind of, it's been there, but nothing has been, there's no activity there, but we have to figure out how we're gonna push all this and manage it properly. Um, Scilabs, I found out a couple of these details because I have to ask them. Just some you know, facts about, their build infrastructure. So they have a free edition, which if you log in and create, uh, it uses the AWS T3 machine uh, with a 60 minute build timeout, okay? The containers hosted on Scilabs Cloud are hosted in a library associated to your, let's say, GitHub user account, whatever. 
Uh, there is no concept of having like hosting containers in an organization. In this case, like GitHub organization, something like Easy Builders or like a group library. Um, that would be so that we can share all of our containers in one place. This Scilabs web builder, which you see right here, um, can build containers. So you can have the recipe and build. But one of the issue is I, I don't know how you can pass in source tarballs or other stuff in here if you need to build it over here. There is this enterprise support, which you have to pay if you want to have on-prem instance of Scilabs Cloud, to if you want to have full control. So there's a lot of limitations right now that I can't do in the free edition, but you know, these are some things that you can play around with. And I'll show you a quick demo of Scilabs. So if you're, if you're in Scilabs and you log in, so the first thing you want to log in at clouds.scilab, Io. And the first thing you need to do is you need to go into your user account, create an access token. Once you create that, then you can actually, on the command line, uh, remote login and then push containers. If you go to the library, this is where you see the, the um, kind of your project, kind of your home direct, uh, like menu of your containers. So you can actually build, uh, like click on any of the containers. This is my easy build container. It shows you how you can pull and you know sign whatever download you have this remote builder feature where you can actually as i can see build the recipe and we're over here you can actually see a history of all the builds you can click on one of these builds and it will show you all the the content <coughs> of what's actually doing right so that is pretty much this there is one other thing for instance key store where you need to push your key. So I have my key in here if you want to sign containers. So now let me just kind of switch over and I'm going to do a live build. Let's see. All right, so that's what you kind of have to do. To get this build working and it will take some time now I'm going to switch over to Scilabs it's doing a remote um, stream so if you go here to remote builder you should be able to see this build kicking off right is now trying to install easy build etc and you can actually see the same exact stuff on the command line. There is, uh, this works pretty well. So while, while this is being built, um, it actually takes pretty, it's, it's pretty short. Um, yeah, it installs easy build and then, you know, switches over to the easy build user. And yeah. Now it's actually just generating the this SIF file because it, it, it builds pretty quick. Um, so just going back, um, this is my last slide, but it's just some things I want you guys to think about. Hopefully now you have seen kind of what I've done. One of the things EasyBuild does is that it automates the recipe generation and container build. Container build, that's a dash dash container build image. You have to be root for this. Um, you know, sh it, should, it should be support both of the features. Uh, it's not clear to me right now. Right now, I'm just building them manually. But recipe generation is certainly nice. Uh, should we store them in a Git repo somewhere? Um, if so, we need to discuss how we're going to do that. If we need to build and publish all the containers, uh, I don't know, should we push them in Scilabs or should we have like our own remote builder instance? because you can have a different endpoint. Uh, can we build the easy build containers locally? And that's, uh, that's gonna be a little tricky because at the moment right now for Java, I had to build it locally and push it. But imagine if you have to build something locally and then some other image has to be bootstrapped on top of it, then you're gonna have some issues. If so, which architectures do we support? Um, according to, you know, Scilabs are using T3 machines. So, you know, whatever, Things that maybe Skylake, if it's that machine, then maybe we should just stick to that. 
I don't know. This, Sh should... this is not something you can control, though, right? Not in the free edition, but uh, they say you can do that in the enterprise support. I mean, because you're building it on-prem, so you have full control. So with the free version, you don't have any control. But does that mean you may end up on a different architecture? Well, they only, multiple multiple architecture times right they only have one architecture. They only have one. That's that's one thing. So um, yeah. So one of, one of the things I'm actually doing in this build. <laughs> you see this line right here? Well, it's not done yet, but I'm actually trying to uh, get the CPU model and I actually got it on the build. So this is the Intel Xeon. Now I made this customization. It's not part of the, uh, the, the it's not part of the single uh, easy build template. So I'm actually doing this, but the, the thing is I want to see, okay, how can we actually use these? It doesn't work in labels. <laughs> That's the one thing. I, I, you can't put in shell code into the, the label section. Um, there's, there's something Massimiliano and I should show you for this. Where actually me, Todd, and Massimiliano are collaborating on a small library mm -hmm. that allows you to track what kind of processor you're building stuff for. Yeah. And you can query it and it will tell you it's Intel Haswell and you can use it as a label for the container, something like yeah. that. So this is probably what you want, what kind of architecture am I yeah. on? And you can <laughs> use it as a tag yeah, yeah. or even in the container name maybe. And yeah. then people know what to expect. Yeah. Exactly. And, and certainly, like, yeah, all that detail, we, we need to know what kind of stuff we actually need to query. But, I mean, I, I know the starting point, we probably agree on certain aspects of the CPU, stuff that we need to get. So that actually contained our build successfully. So some other things to think about, okay, well, if we sign containers in Scilabs, then who's going to sign it? Um, it's easier for us to sign it because we're a user, but if you have an easy build user, then I don't know, we might have to create an account. Or we can just leave it unsigned. It may be simple that way. But, but then again, I don't know. You know I want to create an official repository. Something else to think about, can we integrate like EBNUPR if we are going to push containers, but you know, for recipe files? Could we do something like that? And shall we create multiple easy build base image? Right now it's CentOS 7, but Maybe you want to think about CentOS 8 and other versions. Um, and should we create some domain-specific base images, right? So we could we could <coughs> potentially fork off Easy Build to with a new repo and then start building recipes like you know buying from <coughs> and, mix, and just have a base image and then you can just bootstrap from there. And then this kind of a naming scheme. You know, right now it's Singularity app version. I'm not sure if tool chains in there, but you know, it may be a little complicated when you have multiple recipes bootstrapping from different base images. What I mean is you have a FOSS 2017, you easy build 1.0, but then you have an easy build 2.0 with the same exact one. You get the point? <coughs> so that's pretty much it. Thank you. So what's your main motivation? Why do you think we should have this bunch of um, containers in the Scilabs library? What, what would people be using it for? Actual production? Yeah, to some use? extent. Yeah, yeah, like if you have a multi, like for me, like I, I know some other folks have maybe multiple sites they want to manage, install, so instead of having to you know, build the same exact software for multiple sites. You can just build the container once, pull it, save the time. Because easy build works inside the container. Well, to some extent, only the very small, short running jobs within 60 minutes work. Mm -hmm. But then the challenge is when you're trying to build something like GCC, even <coughs> 30 minute didn't work. And the 60 minute I tried with bootstrapping from Binutos, and it still didn't work because it was still configured. It was still in the configure stage or make stage, I, I believe. Mm -hmm. So it, another option is we get it locally and then build it. It it actually builds GCC three times because it does a bootstrap or even more than three times. But yeah. So you can you can do the GCC install slightly different to speed it up, yeah. which may be enough to push it down in the sixty minute range, but. It'll be tight. 
And also you you only have one or two cores, I think. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know yet, but I have to find out. Something like that. So it's very limited. And for GCC, it's going to yeah. be an issue. Yeah. But you can do the build locally and just push the base container. Mm. You'll have to be careful which architecture you use locally. But yeah. yeah. It, I mean, it, it's interesting to see what kind of issues you, you ran into. And yeah. the improvements that have been made this year are, I'm well aware, they're only for Singularity, not for Docker. Mm. So I'm not, I'm not surprised that the Docker support is pretty broken right now because I haven't used it since a year and a half, I think. Yeah. No, I, I'll show you some other stuff. In, so yeah, this container that you have, you know, if you shell into this container, you know, you see, you see that bzip2 is loaded in there, right? So you can directly use it, and you have the whole module environment set up for you. Some other things to think about are, well, the containers automatically have, like, sections in there, like, for instance, the recipe section. So if we need to, for instance, if somebody builds a container, we need to find a way, okay, maybe they forgot. Well, I think there is a bzip, uh, inspect dash D will get you the recipe from the container. So it could be some potential way. Well, ideally we should have something like EVNU PR for this or something like that. But if somebody builds containers in their own place, well, they should have it so, so that they don't do this. It should just be in a repository. The reason is, like when I'm building these containers, sometimes I'm actually deleting the container and rebuilding it because I find a bug. Um, yeah. So you could actually get a lot of this in, like you could do inspect, dash r, bzip, that will get you the, the run section, and then you know the environment section, you know, dash e. So like all of that stuff is there. It's just a matter of trying to get this detail somewhere in Git. How are you going to solve the, um, how are the dependency of the container? Because if you, yeah. if you have a container, can you set the speed model to new or skydive with ABX? Yeah. No. Well, and I don't have that. Well, so then, yeah. No, no, I think you can fix, right? I mean, yeah, it, I think it's also. Seeing, uh, yeah. Does Singularity support multi architecture containers? I know Docker does. Does Singularity support multi architecture containers? So Docker does, so you can have like one single label with, that, with multiple architectures inside. Mm -hmm. I don't know if Scilabs or Singularity supports it. Yeah, I, I don't think it would. I mean, at the moment, I don't think there is a feature to do that. And honestly, this label section, which is this section thing L, I thought about putting the stuff in here, but the problem is this thing is actually, it's a JSON file. So you can't just like, I was thinking about, okay, maybe I could just in, update the JSON file to put it in, but, um, I need to do it through shell functions. So I was thinking maybe I could just put it in the post section and just update. There's a file in the dot singularity that has this stuff in there. But it's not clear to me um, what the right way. I don't even think it's going to be, labels are not used for anything. Um, they, they need to be used for something like part of build, uh, run, singularity exec or run, where it needs to be part of there. and it, catches the labels to say, if you're not in this architecture, it should just stop. Or it yeah, or it just stops, you know. That could be part of like an if condition in the run script. I don't so, know. I do have another question regarding your base image, Isabel 1.0. Why don't you have Isabel installed in that image? Oh, yeah, the reason is because then you want to keep up to date with the easy configs, uh, easy build framework and everything, because it's, you know, that's always going to be updating. If you put it in the base image, then you're stuck to that version at a point in time. So if I do it now, it's 4.1.1. And then if I bootstrap from 
future. I mean, yeah, certainly we could do an upgrade, but there's no point of putting easy build in that base image because it's not going to install anything. It's just to set up the environment. The other stuff is actually going to install. You get the point, right? Like if I'm going to build BZEP, I need to still install the latest version. If I use the old version, then you don't know, you don't get it. Um, just another question. Uh, so you're uh, loading the module in the post install, mm -hmm. in the post. It's the environment section. Yeah. So is there any reason to have modules in the container? So from a user point of view, I just want to run the container and have all the uh, software that I installed in the container loaded and available. So yeah. do you load everything that is installed in the container? Yeah, well, um, not exactly. I think what, so I'll show you an example of one. I think bzip installs multiple containers. I mean, easy config. So if you do, So yeah, in this one you only load bin utils. Um, so would would it make more sense to have a profile uh, file where you keep adding all the variables that LMOD adds when you do an ML load? When you load the module, just add this to the profile so every time that you execute the container, you have that environment already loaded. What's the that then you can do a singularity run of the container and just and ju the application without having to do a module load before. No, but the what? modules are loaded by default in the environment section. If you build a container for BIN, no, in in, the, in this case only bin utils is yeah, installed. The others are built dependent. So I'll show you. Um, I don't know if I can. We're, we're not beaning up build. Yeah, but let's say I install uh, in Singularity a couple of softwares that are not dependent on each other. I want to have both of them loaded. When, when you... <laughs> so this is the actual recipe file. I mean, um, so if you're under dot easy build environment, what's happening is in the file system path, this is the file in, sing in easy build, I mean, in Singularity container that's actually writing this section. So you could see we are sourcing Etsy profile and sourcing all of this stuff. The, what it does, Carlos, by what Easy Build does, if say you build a container that has Open Foam and Gromax, like do EB Open Foam Gromax build container, it will load both modules because that's what you asked Easy Build to build. So it will do a module load Open Foam, module load Gromax. But it will not do it if I have a base image with Gromax, and then I do easy build install open form on top of that. And probably you don't want to install both softwares at the same time because you will run out of time in setups. So you may have your tool chain and then keep adding software on top of that with different uh, installations. So I don't know, from my point of view, it would make sense to just run the lmod command, not the ml, but the lmod command, to and put the output inside this environment file. Then you have all the all the variables, and you don't have to run m module load at the beginning, which will also speed up the the spawn of the container. So we're still install lmod just because of easy build, but we're not using it inside, so. It's Seems a little, yeah. seems a little bit odd, but okay. It, it seems a bit odd, but a normal user will never look at the environment anyway. You have to just shell into the container, start using the thing, and it'll work, and they'll be happy. So yeah. they don't care how it happens. Yes. If it, hard, if it helps with the startup of the container, or if it gives you more flexibility in terms of what gets loaded or activated in the environment, then fine. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, and the other thing is right now, the easy build uh, base image, 
I built it with Elmod at that point in time. And it's actually, Elmod is installed in that base image. So I know because Easy Build depends on Elmod, we may want to think about that as part of a base image where we say Easy Build 1.0 is tested with Elmod, you know, eight in this version. Mm -hmm. And then going forward, you build a new base image and then go from there. Now, because of the base image that I've done, we can <coughs> scrap out a lot of the code in the framework and all you then have to do is just bootstrap from that image. Now, where that image resides is also a matter of where we push it. So there's all, like, a lot of these things are just kind of related to each other. To, to get back to Carlos's question on why you're not adding easy build in a base container, so you, you want to follow the latest easy build releases, basically, right? You do a pip install easy build and the yes. image that you build on top of the base so you get the latest version. You have to be a little bit careful there. If we ever get to easy build five, we'll make some breaking changes in there. So if you then rebuild the container image, what you were doing may not work anymore. So yeah. maybe we should change the pip install easy build to pip install easy build smaller than five, just so we stick to the latest four version. And that way it should not break even if you rebuild it 10 years from now. It's probably wishful thinking, but uh, we, you don't want to auto update to Easy Build 5 when Easy Build 5 is there because yeah. that would, or yeah. that may backfire. Okay, any more questions for Shazab? <laughs> if not, then I guess that's a wrap. <laughs>